So, guys, I am so excited for this episode of Perry TV. We're both giggling here. <laughs> um, I have, here's the thing. I bought this book a while ago and I read it. I, I, bought, I buy a lot of books. I don't always read them, but I did read your book. Yeah. And I, 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 well, I did read this woman's book that I'm going to introduce you to her in just a minute. And I started, you know, I usually, when I love a book, I will stalk the authors and, uh, and I checked out her social media and her website and I reached out, um, to connect and, you know, little by little, I actually ended up being a guest in her podcast. And then I invited her to come to us because you're in for a treat. Today we have Dana Wild. Dana is a best-selling author of Train Your Brain and the creator of the Celebrity Formula. And I can't just say that, but I'm going to go give you a deeper bio about Dana because I just wanted to know more about her before we even let her talk. I know she's getting there. Um, Dana is an expert in how to intentionally, and I love this word, systematically change your mindset so you can get better outcomes. After growing her own business from zero to a million dollars in only 19 months, Dana can teach you how to make money by being happy and get paid for being you. Yes. Good, Good to know. With nearly 100,000 followers in 68 countries, Dana is a best-selling author of Train Your Brain and featured in the movies, which I actually haven't watched, so I will definitely check them out, The Abundance, the Abundance Factor, The Truth About Prosperity, and Dream Big. She's fascinated by neuroscience and the power of the mind. She affects life daily on the Mind Aware show where she interviews thought leaders, brain scientists, and celebrities about how to intentionally think wealthier, happier, and healthier thoughts. So, Dana, welcome. Thank you so much for making that part. The crowd goes wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dolores, I'm so happy to be here because, you know, I just love what you're doing in the world. I love hanging out with you, and we are just going to have a good old jibber-jabber. Yeah, I'm so good. You have your book in the back. I have your book here. I know. I keep it close. <laughs> Uh, this is one I don't even share with. I, I will, I will buy it and send it to people. I won't rent it. Um, it's like my little Bible. So, Dana, tell me about a project, experience, or accomplishment that you consider to be one of the most significant in your life. Well. I feel like for me, when I had the vision to do this company, the Mind Aware and was really on hopeful ground, but not knowing ground. You know, I didn't know anything about the internet. I knew, I knew nothing. Like I knew zero about internet marketing. I knew zero about anything having to do with that whole cyber world. And then when I came in and what we did as a company is we went from zero to 60,000 on the email list and over a million dollars in sales in the first two years. And it felt so cool to, to have that come to fruition, you know? I mean, that was just like one of the yeah, most amazing amazing. things. Yeah. I don't have kids or I would probably say like the birth of a child, but you no, know, but... getting my dog was not as big of a deal as doing that. <laughs> so so let, let me ask you this, you know, we can't, we have this winding road to where we arrive, right? But what has always been with you, like a common denominator of behavior, belief, or resource that is always there? Yeah, the, the, the mantra that I've had my whole life, and I've been reverse engineering this because I have a new program all called Train Your Brain for Influence. And so I've kind of, there are people I think who are naturals, you know, they're naturally optimistic or they're naturally uh, succeed or they're achievers at what they do. And they get to the top of their industry. So you line up a hundred people who are at the top of their industry and you say, well, how'd you get here? And they'll all give you a different reason how they got there. They'll give you an action step. You know, you've got to be on Instagram. I talked to John. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to be on Instagram. I got to do trade shows or whatever it is. But what people are, are not talking about, and this is like, I feel like my place in the marketplace is that achievers tend to think the same way. So I've been trying to because I tend to be a little bit of a, a natural. I have very high positive expectation for myself. I expect to achieve. I expect to do well. So I thought, well, what are the thoughts I'm thinking? What are the thoughts I'm thinking to make that happen? And throughout my whole life, my mantra has been, 
I can figure this out. I can figure this out. I can figure this out. I can figure it out. Like most of what most of us are doing, unless you're out there in cyber world trying to invent the cure for cancer or something that's never been done, most of us are doing stuff that's really doable and figure outable. So that's it. I can figure this out. It's, stuck, I, it's been with me my whole life. I love it. My husband calls that because I have something similar and my husband calls it, you don't even see the mountain. Yeah, like the, exactly. The huge wall in front of your face. Yeah, he says to me, "You don't even, you don't even see it." Exactly. You it's don't just even like acknowledge it. Totally, totally. Is that what? Do you have a certain mantra or way you think that relates to that? Do you think? I think for me, um, I, I, I think there's just a gut. I don't know that there's enough words, but um, but it's I'm a puzzle maker. And so for me, it's more about, okay, what's the puzzle piece I'm missing? Nice. Yeah, that's like, nice. Like, let's just, okay, or, or let, let's just deconstruct this situation or scenario because mm -hmm. it must be another way. I'm the kind of person that if my kids is looking for something, we can't find it. I can't stop until we find it because I know I have a gut feeling that I'll find it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and usually I do. <laughs> well, that's it. And that's positive expectation. That's what that is. And people have it in certain areas of their life. Like some people are really good at uh, chefs or cooking, right? So they know, or bakers, like they know, like I can make this cake and it's going to be moist and wonderful. And the icing is going to be delicious. And they're really in knowing about that. Like they know that that could happen. They have positive expectation that it's going to turn out. And so that's what we try to do with train your brain is we try to help people move up the emotional scale into that feeling of positive expectation about whatever they're doing. Because when you're there, then your brain, your reticular activating system will work on your behalf. So I had another question, but I'm going to jump into this line of thought because here's one thing that has happened to me, and maybe you could explain it for our audience, and is that when you're in that positive thinking, and it happens to me sometimes when I cook or when I'm doing stuff at work, that I get into action mode that really has no thought associated to it. Right. There's like a... I mean, many times I'll go and cook a meal out of whatever I have in the fridge and it comes out really well, but there's no recipe. There's just, it's just intuitively I mix some stuff together or, or I'll do something online because I just had a gut, of, like a, um, an intuitive hunch and just, oh, just do this. What is that? Well, that's being in the state of flow. That's okay. that positive state of flow where you do, you have access to other things. And I think, you know, there's some, I wish I could remember who said this, but somebody said like, you know, self-doubt kills more dreams or kills more businesses than anything else. And I think that, that the state that you're talking about when you're cooking what people don't realize is that you can create that state. You can intentionally think thoughts in your head. And when you intentionally think those thoughts in your head, there's a part of the brain called the reticular activating system that's like a little matchmaker. And what it does is it sits at attention like right now in this moment, look around the room and how many like colors and sounds and stimuli and sensations. Well, this reticular activating system sifts through that mucky muck and it looks for things. It looks for whatever you're thinking about and whatever you're talking about. So the reason why it's so important but to, to be uh, vigilant about the way you think, and we like to say to be a proactive thinker in your own head, it's important because if you've ever had the experience of maybe looking for a new car, or and then you start to see that car everywhere, or getting pregnant, you start to see pregnant women everywhere, right? Well, this is the same concept. When you're a proactive thinker in your own head, when you're thinking positive intentional thoughts, you get into the act of flow, you feel like taking action. When you get happy, like getting happy is practical. It's not like woo-woo, like, oh, you should be happy. It's, like it is, it's an ROI. Yeah, it is. It's, we call it emotional ROI. It's practical. You feel better. You like people better. They like you better. You, oh, you yeah. get into the state of flow. You sit down, you work for an hour, and you get what you could have gotten done in eight hours of being crabby. It's like you feel like taking action. It's, it's the number one stop. We call it intentional action. Feel good first, then take action. So, so then let's go back to the question I did have on my little piece of paper. 
which is why is it true that what you focus on grows? Yeah, it's be- really what we were just saying. Yeah, it's because of that reticular activating system. And that's the thing, you know, the, the piece I want to tell you is like, I'm a, I consider myself a spiritual person and I consider myself connected to source and I like to be in states of flow and all of those things. And I consider myself woo-woo. But when it comes to getting what you want, or it comes to quote unquote manifesting or getting results in your life, there's really, you don't have to make it woo woo because our brains are designed to give us exactly what we want. When you say things like, all my clients are broke, your brain says, got it. I'm on the lookout for broke clients for you. Just like I'm on the lookout for pregnant women or cars, I'm on the lookout, right? And so, so there's only four steps to this whole process. You know, step one is the wake up step. Wake up. You have to pay attention and notice when you say something, we call it busting yourself. You have to be willing to bust yourself because your brain is matching that up. So, so there was a, I once was in this, I did this program of, of hypnosis. And what she explained to us is the, the, I think it's the left brain, right? That is the one that doesn't have the, um, the cognitive side, right? It's more the intuitive, faster, mm-hmm. you know, grabbing from like pieces of information. And when you say, um, for example, I say, I don't want to get pregnant or I want to get pregnant, the only part that, I don't know why we're talking about this, but anyway, but the only part that that brain gets is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. If you can think of it like the brain so thinks the, in the pictures. The qualifier is lost. Yeah. Because yeah. it said, if you tell a child, don't touch the table, what all, wow. all that the child hears is touch the table. The yeah. don't is not in it. Yeah. That's why they say, you know, I don't want bad clients What you... I'm getting is I want back clients. Yeah, exactly. Because the brain thinks in pictures. Exactly. So if I say don't think of pink elephants, you immediately think of a pink elephant because it's the subject of the sentence. So the, the better you can keep the subjects of your sentence. And really what we're trying to do now is just help people to, to find ways to feel good. You know, it's nice if you can think happy thoughts, but most of us can't walk around going, I am abundant, I am abundant, and really like <laughs> believe it, right? So just like play with the dog or play with the cat or go for a walk or play some good music or think happy thoughts, feel more hopeful. Say some hope sentences like, I hope I figure this out or I hope I get better at this or I hope this works out or I hope I get a really good client today. Like just start getting a little bit of momentum. You know, you don't have to be perfect with it as long as you're aware. And that's why I named my company the mind aware instead of the mind happy. Like it's all that matters is the awareness part, you know? Exactly. So let me ask you this. You're famous for saying that action is not the way to build a business. (laughs) Tell me more. Well, it's a little bit of like what I was saying a second ago is that, is that if you line a hundred people up against the wall, they're all going to have taken different actions to get there. Some of them are going to be linked in, Some are going to be one-on-one phone conversations. Some are going to be Facebook. I mean, they all have different methods, speaking, blogging, you know, so the action's not the common denominator, you know, action is not what builds your business, but the thing they will have in common is the way they think they will have a certain positive expectation. And so what we like to say is that action is not what builds your business, but intentional action does. So Mm -hmm. if you make mindset and feeling good first, feel good first, then take action. When you're in that feel good flow state, like you talk about, when you're feeling good, when you're feeling positive, when you're feeling hopeful, everything you do turns to gold. Like if you ever left like a speaking event, especially with Ted, right? You leave a speaking event or you leave a motivational event and it's like, man, you could just talk to anybody and you can book them and sell them and you can't wait to sell and talk about your business and all this stuff. Well, you're getting that success, not because you talk to that person, but because you talk to that person in a state of flow or in a state of feeling good. And so, so people have to start realizing that action is not what's building your business. It's feel good action. It's the mindset part first. It's not trudging away, grinding every day that does it. So it's almost like aligned action. Yes. Action. Yes. Yes. And, and yes, exactly. The reason I started calling it intentional action instead of intentional, inspired is I maybe had this problem where I'd feel like doing something and I'd go, is this an inspired thought? 
I don't know if this is inspired or not, or do, is this just another shiny object that I want to chase? <laughs> you know, and, and, and so good. I started saying like, here's how you can know if it's an inspired thought. Did you feel really good when you got it? And did it feel like, oh, I can't wait to do that. <laughs> then that's take a great. So, so maybe that's my next question. How can someone who has a tendency to think negatively turn their thinking around and maybe right. discern what is what? Yeah, it's a great question because I would venture to bet you're a natural too. Like you probably have a natural propensity to being positive. Am I right? I've been actually as a kid, I was made fun of. For being so happy? Wow. I, mean, I, had a, I mean, truth be told, I had a not great childhood. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but I was... I think that was my survival mode. I li literally would wake up in the morning and think, what am I looking forward to today? Like as an, I remember as a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, and it would be things like, oh, today we have ice cream day at school. Or, or, or yeah, I mean, I remember I was very little, nine or 10, wow. and it was something like, oh, oh yeah, today I have art and I like art. Or today is, we have gym. Like it was tiny things that usually would happen at school. I'm gonna make me cry. <laughs> It's so touching. But that's, I mean, I, I did it because I did it. I you know, but nobody taught me to it. But, but I think, you know, I think you have, yeah, I know I, have, I got goosebumps too. But yeah. it was just, um, the rest wasn't happy. The really, the, I mean, stepmother and blah, blah, blah. It just wasn't. And, um, wow. what and that's how I would wake up in the morning. And I actually lost that over the years as I became, as, I, as the world around me became happier and better and I was more, um, you know, I didn't have to work so hard maybe to be happy. I didn't realize I was working so hard. Um, uh, I kind of lost some of those practices, if, if you want to call them that. But, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm... Well, that's, a, I mean, what a coping mechanism and good for you. And I think that sometimes, you know, people who are negative, they hear this kind of talk and they're thinking like, yeah, right, think positive and all this. And so I've got a couple of really, first of all, I've got a really good um, tip, uh, tool, method that they can use that will be, that will help. Um, but the first piece I want to say is, if you do have a negative background and you have a, a habit of thought that's been negative, this stuff works better and faster for you. Because what happens, and I didn't realize this until I started, you know, had enough followers and we went, I went to an event and people were introducing themselves and saying like, I was most negative in high school. And the next one's like, I was the biggest complainer. And I'm like, really? But what I realized is that if you're at about like you are, like a seven or eight happiness on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're implementing train your brain intentionally, you can go to a 10 and it's a feel better, but it's not such a big jump. You know what I mean? You get some better results. You can use it more intentionally, things like that. But if you're somebody who's been operating your life and getting results, operating at like a three level of happiness, when you start implementing even just a little bit of this, it's like whoosh, right through the roof, you know? So you, the impact of it, the, the level of happiness just is fast and the results are fast. And here's the good thing about these tips I'm gonna give you is that if you are really consistent over the next 72 hours, by the time you're done with 72 hours, your reticular activating system will kick in and you'll start to see evidence that it's working. Wow. Oh, All right. Yeah. I'm make a note when yeah, I put very it. good. So this first one is for people who are um, tend to be negative or have something that's a challenge for them. And what it is, is the power of the powerful word, but. So but is one of the power words in the English language. And so people who are negative, they might say something like, like, what would be the, one of the most common problems your uh, followers would have? Uh, I don't have enough clients. I don't have enough time. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, clients. I'm What's that? I don't have enough clients. I don't have enough clients. Okay, we'll do the clients one first. I want to come back to the time one because that I got a that whole different true. answer for that one. Okay, I don't have enough clients. So think about when you're thinking that. I don't have enough clients. I don't have enough clients. I don't have any clients. I don't have enough clients. So your particular about. activating system is going, okay, I got it. Anybody who's a potential client, we're going to make sure you don't see them. We're going to, you know, block that out. So you have to find a way. Step two of the whole program is like, do you want to keep matching that up? Because if you do, then keep saying that. But if you don't, you must, step three, find a way to talk about the current situation 
in a way that feels good. And step four is feel the good feeling. So find a way to talk about the current situation. So the word but is your friend because it negates everything that comes before it. So, so you, I don't have enough clients, but, but I'm to be, yeah, exactly. But I'm feeling a shift now, but people are starting to come on my radar. I don't have enough clients, but I'm open to receiving more. I don't have enough mm-hmm. clients, but I feel more coming in now. I don't have enough clients, but I'm training my brain and it's starting to work. I don't mm-hmm. have enough clients yet, but now your brain doesn't even hear that when you so say that. I love, so, I love, so you know how there's those um, health coaches and, and it sounds like this to me, you know, that's some, there's some good health coaches that will say, you don't have to change anything in your diet. Just when you serve your food, just put, put some more greens in your plate, which obviously will be less room for the French fries, right? <laughs> So what I'm hearing is, which is great, he says, it's not about people have to stop doing what they're doing or change what they're doing. You just just add this little but, yes. blah, blah, blah. Yes, and, and think that, about it differently. Just start thinking, because it's even better than that, Dolores, because you're 100% spot on, but you want to know what else? You don't have to change anything about you. That thing that you thought is keeping you from success, I'm a procrastinator, I'm not techie, I'm shy, I'm disorganized. You don't have to change anything and you can be successful now. So it's like, I'm shy, but my clients like my style. I'm shy, but clients are coming anyway. I'm shy, but I'm good one-on-one. I'm shy, but my calendar's full. All of those things that you thought were standing in your way, are now you don't have to change any of them. Just add a button, not a B-U-T-T, but a B-U-T. (laughs) Flip that butt, yeah. Yeah, and use that butt really proactively (laughs) and really be, you know, add stuff. Like, I feel a shift is coming. Like, it doesn't even have to be that exact. Your brain knows what you mean when it's happening. It's happening now. So do that for 72 hours. Pick anything. And for 72 hours, just say, we call it a mantra, right? Say, say it over and over again. Put a reminder on your phone. Put uh, post-it notes up with the, the mantra. If you are somebody who's not negative uh, generally, like you don't lean negative, you can uh, amp up your uh, mantra a little bit by just not, we call those transitory statements with the word but. You can use like a plain old mantra. Like um, some of my favorites are, One of my favorites I'm using now, which is kind of funny, is this is happening. Like if I have a big project or something that I want done or a certain amount of money I want to make, I'm like, this is happening. Or it's and just just think about that and say and say to yourself, this is happening. Yeah, this is happening. Or or if you want to be specific, money is flowing to me. Clients are coming on my radar. You know, uh, life is good. More money is flowing to me now. I'm open to all the abundance that's around. Like think how good you feel. Right now, when I say those five or six things in a row, don't you just want to take on the world? Mm -hmm. And what happens is you prime your brain when you are thinking positive thoughts, you open up the creative pathways in your brain. And so you get access to better ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. frustration and overwhelm closes it. So you get access to better ideas. So you start to have these really brilliant ideas that are right there, right in front of you all the time. I've, I've learned myself, even like, even just, you know, it's natural. At the end of the day, you're tired. You, something comes up that is kind of bugging you and you want to solve it. And usually when I'm tired, I am a lot less resourceful and a lot less capable of really seeing what needs to be done. Yeah. And I've learned that about myself. And now I'm always giving myself 24 hours to, when something bugs me, like an email or something, I'll give myself 24 hours. Um, and hopefully uh, a night in between, like a sleep in between. Yes. Because it's just night and day. Everything I couldn't see the night before when I was heavy with the emotion, I can see after I sleep, literally sleep on it. Totally. Spot on. It's really a good practice. And it's a good, it's, you know, what you're talking about too is awareness. You're mm-hmm. aware of when you're, you're in flow or you're in the right frame of mind or you're in your best self. And it's like if we would just stop making decisions and stop taking action when we're not in that place, think of how much easier life would be. Like, I'm not kidding when I say to people, like, make money by being happy and get paid to be you. I'm really talking about working less and making more. This brings me to the busy talk because... The busy talk is really one of mine too. Like that's, if I have to bust myself on so on anything, it's always I'm busting myself on the, oh my God, I'm so busy. So, so here's the thing. People think they need time to do things 
when they're using action to build their businesses. But once you figure out that action is not what builds your business, now you don't need to fit in that time for all those things that you think are building your business. And now what happens is when I'm loading my dishwasher, I'm building my business. Because I'm loading my dishwasher, I'm thinking those happy thoughts, I'm having positive expectation, I'm practicing my mantras. And so now when I'm hanging out with family, I'm building my business because I'm feeling good, the creative pathways in my brain are open. I mean, think of it. How many of you get your most brilliant ideas when you're driving in the car, when yeah. you're in the shower? Nobody gets them when they're sitting in front of their computer working on their funnel. You know, nobody gets the brilliant ideas then. So now what happens is you don't, need so much time for things because your your business building time is all the time that you're happy right yeah so that i mean that it, i literally you know here's a I, i'm sure this should be standardized and unfortunately in schools and in kids the recess has been removed but I, i'm thinking of of joy breaks joy uh, you know people talk about coffee breaks um, in business, on work, and it's not just with anything in our life. We need to have joy breaks. Yeah, yeah. Wake up time where you just are like, okay, I'm gonna take this minute, align myself, oh, and feel good, yes, jump up whatever. and down. Because yeah, we all like people think when you're a positive thinking, you know, expert, they're like, oh, you just walk around all blissed out all day. And I'm like, no, every single day something upsets me. Usually my computer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get angry, I get off center, but what happens is you get better and faster at pulling yourself back into yep, alignment. Yeah. You get better at catching it. And those things happen. And so, so with regards to time, one of the things are being busy. One of the phrases that I've kind of become known for now is the problem is not the problem. The problem is that you keep thinking about the problem and you keep talking about the problem. So the problem isn't that you don't have clients. The problem is that you keep talking about it. The problem isn't that you're too busy. The problem is that you keep thinking about it and you keep talking about it. And so if we can realize that if we can start to talk about the current situation in a way that feels good, we get rid of the problem then. So the I'm too busy conversation becomes more like, you know what, I am busy, but I love my full life. And I, I am busy, but I get everything done I need to in time. And I am busy, but I'm in a state of flow more often than not. I am busy, but I love the joy that my lives, I have so many interests. I love them all. And I, I really focus on the things I love and I'm getting to be a brain trader. So it's getting easy for me. And I handle my life like an orchestra with ease and flow. And I've got all these things and I find space for me. And I love that even though I'm busy, I have pockets of time that are just for me and I know how to take them. You know, now you can still be busy without it being a big, oh, I'm so busy. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I love that. And I also think one of the things that has been working for me lately is that I some days I have days or a couple of days in a row that are like insane, uh, whether it's deadlines or a lot of meetings or travel and meetings. And, um, and I'm actually using my own personal history to validate my mantra. For example, like I've had, like, I'm never going to make that deadline. And then I ask myself, how many times have I never, have I not met, met a deadline? <laughs> never. And so, yes, it looks insane, but I've done it before. Yeah, yeah. We've called it gathering evidence. Like once you know how you are. Say, yeah. I, I, I've been in sticky situations before. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, you know the kind of person you are. And the other thing too, with regards to days in particular that are busy, is that if you're, present in the moment and if you have the intention to stay in flow or the intention to um, show up you know present minded even if you're backed up day by day you've got 30 seconds before that interview or that meeting or that next thing to be like okay I'm here I'm yeah. present I'm centered it's going to be great we're going to have a nice time oil. Yeah. right you mean this one <laughs> Oh my God, Clarity! Right here, Clarity. That is so funny. Oh, when are we gonna hang out in person? I, I just, know, I know. I wish, I'm in Minnesota. Nobody comes to Minnesota, I you know. Have to go to Minnesota. Okay, so we're building the Clarity TV library. What book would you add? Of course, we. I am adding this book, but what what other book should we add? 
Yeah, it definitely ask and it's given by Abraham Hicks, Esther, Jerry and Esther Hicks. That's they're they're my jam. Like I love them. It's really funny because I um I wrote I even had it even has there a it is, it. yay. Yeah, I uh wrote Train Your Brain in two thousand three the first time. Wow. And two years later I was in Minnesota. I was living somewhere else at the time. And I came to Minnesota and I was visiting a friend and we were having lunch at this place. And I was telling her about train your brain, yada, 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 yada. And she said, um, you have to listen to Abraham Hicks. She said, you're going to love him. And she literally had cassette tapes. We went to her car. She had like this box of cassette tapes and she gave me all these cassette tapes. And the second I heard it, I was like, this is it. And their work has influenced Train Your Brain and really helped to bring it to a, a whole different level just because they're, I'm still like so involved with, uh, with what they've got to say. They're, you know, I, I, w I got to see her in person uh, yeah. two years ago. It was, it was great. She's so funny too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's awesome, it was, isn't it? Was it? Great. it was great. Yeah. 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 It's good. Did you try to get in the hot seat? I did not. Okay. I didn't try. <laughs> It is there. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in the hot seat a couple of times and it is, it's hot, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't dare. I didn't dare. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so I just want to make sure that uh, we respect our listeners' time and our time. So Dana, where do people find you? You know, you can go just straight to the website, DanaWild.com. If you go to DanaWild.com slash free training, I almost always have something free up. Like I've got a really good 60 second workshop now that literally is 60 seconds. Okay. And so, I mean, 60 second workshop.com. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have them come on board. And, you know, it's a great one too, because the stuff that you're teaching in the world is, is a good marriage for this because this is how you access like the stuff you're talking about, mm -hmm. the being able to get up there and be present. And well, the, yeah, you these, are the, these are like the tools and the DNA of the beings that we need to be in order to get where we want to go. So just to clarify, Dana Wilde is w -D -D -A -N -A -W -I -L -D -E dot com. Yes, um, thank you. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Anything else you want to add before we part ways? Gosh, yeah. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me. The thing I would say is if your listeners can just be easy on themselves, like just give yourself a break and relax more and have Don't more take fun. take yourself too seriously. Yeah, exactly. And just realize like we're all just banging around here trying to figure it out. So try yeah. to focus on what's going right, what little things are going right and just let yourself get that momentum because, you know, if you're here, if you're listening to this, then you're somebody who's already into personal development. If you're following Dolores, then you already get this and you're like right there on the path. So let's just support each other and keep the momentum going. And I really love being here and I'm, I just couldn't be more honored to be spending time with you. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. I'm actually going to send a text to my friend who gifted me your book. After she and I did a retreat in a ski house last winter, wow. and as a thank you, she sent me a couple of books, one of which was your book. So I'm going to send her a personal note today. Wow, what a feel good. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, so I will, you'll come back to Clara TV later on when you have more magical stuff out there. But for now, guys, check Dana Wild, W I L D E dot com. Check out slash free training. And I will go and watch the 60 second workshop and um, I'll say thank you, Dana. Thank you for Yay. being here today. Thanks for having me dance party. <laughs> <laughs>